Do you know that in Kenya, single-use plastics have been banned? Welcome back to the channel. This is Jad of Kaduna. Here we talk about environmental sustainability from a Nigerian point of view and also climate change from a Nigerian point of view. But in this video, we are going beyond Nigeria. We are going to Kenya. <laughs> last morning in Kenya I came for a conference and the last few days have been mind-blowing and in this video I'm going to tell you why Kenya is one of the most sustainable countries in Africa Nigerians Nigeria President Bola people bring out your paper and pen and start taking notes Kenya has made significant progress towards sustainability in the last few years and here are some of the reasons why Kenya is one of the most sustainable countries in Africa. Number one, they promote clean energy. So um, the conference I came for is the Africa Energy Forum and also the Youth Energy Summit. So it's a, conf it's a conference summit for the youth. Yes, that's Youth Energy Summit. It's for young people in the energy, other um, young entrepreneurs or students that uh, doing energy courses, energy related courses, and also early career professionals in the energy industry as well. So people like me fall into. And then the Africa Energy Forum was for actually like people, the big wigs in the energy industry. So we had investors and all that. But like the central theme for the conference, like what a whole lot of people were budget, like talking about was clean energy. And it is no surprise because Kenya is heavy on clean energy. They have invested heavily. Like the first day when the president came and gave his speech and talked about the things that like the clean energy project that they have ongoing in Kenya. I Me, mean, I thought that it's just like, you know, presidents now and trying to sell this country. In the last few days, I have interacted with Kenyans. And you're meeting young people doing clean, clean cooking stoves. You're meeting young people doing um solar stuffs you're, you're hearing about the wind farm at Lake Turkana you're hearing about they have over they are having almost 40 e-mobility companies in Kenya in Kenya of almost 40 and yeah we're still we're still starting the conversation I, I was like okay I was like okay well you know things like e electric vehicles and stuff like that are expensive how are you people making it like the Kenyans are able to afford it and all? They have like some of the um, e-mobility companies that I met. There were some that they were doing this. They had made it, the, the, like for instance, the electric bikes, they made it so affordable that um, people that do commercial motorcycles, here they, in Kenya, they call it Buddha Buddha. In Nigeria, they call it Okada, Achaba, depending on where you're coming from or going, depending on where you're coming from. They can afford these electric um, motorcycles. They have this model that instead of, like there was this particular immobility company that I met, instead of you just going to, instead of you going to look for where to charge, they have this charging bank. So is your battery, you just go exchange. So that's like you're buying phone. So you're buying the time that they use to charge the battery. So you just go exchange the battery. And they have some commercial motorcycle people that use electric bikes. In this Kenya, you have some commercial bus drivers that use electric buses. It is Kenya. I was like, Nigeria. Okay. Number two, sustainable tourism. Uh, you have to live in the world for you not to know that Kenya is one of the top tourist countries in Africa. And a lot of people come to Kenya year after year just to have a feel of their tourism. But the Kenyan government and the Kenyan people have ensured that they do sustainable tourism by helping to conserve wildlife. Like the way they conserve wildlife in this country, eh? they have banned and they had banned trophy hunting for a very long time, for almost for over 20 years now. So they have banned trophy hunting. So you're just going to come and see the animals. And they don't cage cage the animals, like they put them in reserves, they put them in like huge places, and then you come just see them. I was opportunity to go to the giraffe center and going in is so cool it's so clean 
you do not throw things away anyhow they have beans everywhere yeah where you wash your hands they are very big on how you interact with the animals with the like with the animals in the, in the center even like the, the the thing that you could do that could make you interact with the animals with the giraffes was you feeding them they fed you, they fed them in these coconut shells like coconut shells will cut it and then half and then you use that to feed the animals and they don't they make sure that you don't spend too long with the animals after a while they tell you like okay your set is done just move away so that you let the animals be they don't like try to force the animals to come no 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 if the animals are not feeling like coming towards you well just stay around and take pictures where you can take pictures and just let them be every like i didn't see one single plastic thing around everything was all so sustainable and <clears throat> and green everything was also sustainable and green and those that were able to go to the safari also said the same thing like you do not like even though yeah sometimes the tourists try to take pictures and all sometimes they go into like the animals private like personal space and all but they try as much as possible for you to respect the animals and just day your day and the animals day their day so they're big on conserving this so they are big on sustainable tourism they also have policies that help tackle waste management i stayed in nairobi and nairobi is clean cleaner than abuja abuja is one of the cleanest cities in nigeria but nairobi be, beat them like i was i I knew that yes, I came for a, a conference and I might not have gotten to all the parts of Nairobi. But I toured a considerable part of Nairobi. So I went to local market, I went to somewhere that was at the other part of town. Like so I toured a considerable part of Nairobi. And all the places I went to, including the local market, were reasonable clean. It was one of the markets I went to, like the Tad Road. I was seeing the Tad Road. There are lots of markets in Nigeria that you are not seeing. <laughs> you don't even know that the, whether the market has Tad Road or not. Because people are everywhere. Even though yes, Kenya has a way lesser population than Nigeria, but still, it's cleaner. <laughs> it is cleaner. Like the, the everywhere was clean. Even though, yes, I won't lie, I saw a few places where I saw like waste around. But it was a situation of rare occurrences and the country has banned single-use plastics so when i went everywhere i went when i came to the hotel i noticed that you know like in hotels they'll keep um bottled water for you i noticed that my room had water in glass bottles so i just thought okay maybe it's just the hotel being all posh and tush Everywhere I went to, I hardly saw plastic, like water in plastic bottles. Not as if they don't have them, but it was very rare to see. Everywhere I went to, they were like refillable options for you. So it was better if you had your bottle than you were looking for uh, like bottled water to, to buy. In the market, when I went to the local market, when they gave me my purchase, it was not in a plastic bag. It was in, I would say, a canvas bag. It was a tote bag, sharp, but I don't know what I can call it, a cotton tote bag or a canvas tote bag, but it was in a tote bag. And I remember asking the seller, I was like, ah, because I didn't see any single-use plastic bag there. So I was like, ah, these people don't use nylon bag. People don't use plastic bags. Like, no, no, they ban plastic bags. So it is a rare thing for you to even see single-use plastic bags in their country. I was like, wow, wow, Nigeria, see your mates. Then reforestation. I don't know about other parts of Kenya, but Nairobi is green. It's Nairobi is 60 to 70%. Like I was just in green places everywhere. Like 60 to 70% of the places I saw where we had lots of trees. There were some streets that we passed by that looked like mini forests. Everywhere was green. There was this place that it was a bridge and since maybe they couldn't put trees in that part of the place. On the walls of the bridge, like that down thing, that I think the pillar that holds the bridge down, they put small, small pots in that pillar. 
like tiny tiny pots of plants. I was like, ah uh ah, -uh, or eat people say, you people so it's not too much. Green, 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 green trees everywhere you turn. And maybe that's one reason why the place is a bit cool. Though they say around this time of the year it's very cold for them. But still like green, 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 and they are not done. They are still planting more trees. They are still trying to greenify. There's a word like that. They're still trying to greenify their country. <sighs> And I wish we had a government that was really big on sustainability. Like, I really, really wish that. They also promote education, gender equality, and healthcare, which are like the big components of sustainable development in any society. And they're also big on conserving their resources. They do things, they promote things. They promote things like community conservation. They conserve their wildlife, biodiversity. They conserve they conserve water. They do rainwater harvesting because according to locals here, they say they do not have as much rain. So any rain that they have, they try as much as possible to do rainwater harvesting. They, they promote renewables, as I said earlier, clean cooking stoves. Like they are doing a lot of clean cooking stove projects. They're doing a whole lot of, they're doing a lot of solar projects, wind power projects, e-mobility projects. Kenya is not there yet, but in the aspect of like making the effort, they are there. They are heavily putting the effort to ensure that their country is way more sustainable. And I wish that a whole lot of African countries could, could just go and meet the Kenyan government, Kenyan people, and borrow expo from them small. Even though, yes, I know Africa as a continent, we did not do a lot to contribute to the climate change and all. But the thing is, climate change is not asking who contributes more who, or who contributes less. And it is left to all of us, we as African people and our African government, to look inwards, to see ways that we could just help tackle this thing. Because it's, it's affecting us badly, way badly than the people that even contributed the most, in quote. So instead of you waiting to be trading blames, who contributes, who do not contribute, we should all be seeking ways on how we could effectively beat this problem because it's a problem that is going to affect our people and also attack our development. And if Kenya are doing this and they are not even there yet, they are still on the way, but I'm amazed at what they are already doing, then Nigeria, they say people are, they say Nigerians, we are their big brothers. They say Nigerians with their big brothers. I believe that we too, we should show our big brother thing and start start, start acting correct. Hey, Sha, if you enjoyed my video, I'm also going to infuse like clips of things from my Kenya travel. If you enjoyed my video, please like. And if you're a Kenyan that come here for the first time, thank you very much. I love your country and I've been saying that I want to come back. But you know, to come back, I need to have money. So I'm also begging you people, a job. Please like, please share this video, please subscribe. So that if you to start paying me, I cannot gather money to now go to Kenya again because God, I love that country. I'm still here, Shah, so I love this country. And as a sustainability enthusiast and as an environmentalist, it feels like home for me. If you, <laughs> it feels like home for me. But until next time, remember that you can be the change that you want to see. John of Kaduna, signing out.